Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, 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 hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah, hallelujah, glory, glory. Glory, hallelujah. Is he the Lord? God is good. We give thanks to God Almighty. Our God is faithful. Our God is awesome. Our God is amazing. We serve a great God. We thank you, Jesus, because you are faithful. You are awesome. You are great. You are beautiful. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I welcome you all today to this first sunday in the month of december in the month of december welcome please share 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 as you join share as you join please share as you join hallelujah please share this message as you join share 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 as as you join trying to bring those on insta on instagram as well amen 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 thank you jesus thank you jesus hallelujah god is good god is good he's faithful his mercies endure it forever our god is good our god is faithful our god is awesome his mercies endure it forever. Good afternoon, everyone. As you all know, my name is Evangelist Esther Onlainka Dia. I welcome you all to my platform. Jesus Christ is my message, Prophetic Ministries. Before we go ahead, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our God, we give you thanks for making us see this beautiful day this wonderful day, this day that you, O oh Lord, has made. We give you all the glory, all the honor, all the adoration, because this can only be you, Lord. This can only be you. You made us see this brand new month, and we're already witnessing us also the first Sunday of the last month of the year 2022. Father, Lord, we give you thanks. Father, receive our thanks in the name of Jesus. Mighty everlasting King of glory, we know you are faithful, O God. We invite you into our presence here. We pray that you speak to us and speak through us in the name of Jesus. I reduce, I decree so that you can increase in me. Father Lord, I surrender all to you, Jesus, and my tongue of clay, please turn it to tongues of fire and use it to speak for the word of life so that both the speaker and the hearer can be blessed in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. I sanctify this platform I'm using. I sanctify with the blood of Jesus. I sprinkle the blood of Jesus over each platform, the Instagram and Facebook. I declare and I decree that only the will of God shall permeate on this platform in the name of Jesus. I destroy every works of darkness, militating against this gathering. I decree that shall not prosper in the name of Jesus. Holy Basin Kalabasiya. Father, have your way, O oh God, and let your power move in our midst this tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to welcome each and every one of you to, to this platform. Jesus Christ is my message, prophetic ministry. And as I mentioned before, my name is Evangelist Esther Olaika Dia. And my message today is Thanksgiving has a spiritual communicate thanksgiving has a spiritual a spiritual language that communicates with god thanksgiving has a spiritual language that communicates with god and i'm going to go in, into it I, I promise you this message is going to be very brief it's going to be very quick it's not going to be very long and um let's quickly go into it what do i mean by thanksgiving has a spiritual language that communicates with god now thanksgiving speaks to god it has its own language so when you give thanks 
you are speaking something to God. We started off last week when we mentioned, when we talked about the, the, the topic then was the power in thanksgiving. We say thanksgiving unleashes the promise of God over your life. That was the first part we talked about last week. This week, we are doing the second part, which is also the final part, which is thanksgiving has a spiritual language that communicates with God. Now, what we discussed, briefly, what we discussed last week, that it that's been unleashing blessings on you, when you give thanks to God, you have created a platform, a pathway for God to act, for God to arise and act on your behalf. We gave examples of even when in the olden days, how they give thanks to God with killing of rams and sheep. And then Jesus Christ, when he came, he became the last lamb to be sacrificed. And we saw also that in the old days, you know, they give thanks to God as in expectations of what they need from God. Or after they receive it, they, they give thanks to God by killing the rams. And in this new dispensation, after the, the, the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we do not need to kill any ram anymore. Christ has been the last um, 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 uh, uh, the last sacrifice. Now, to give thanks, all you need to do is you bring your offering, you bring what you have and give it to the church of God. Now, you are not mandated to bring a particular amount. We are not saying that you should bring offering, you should bring a tithe. No. You bring it as your spirit lead you, as you are led by the spirit of God. You bring your thanksgiving. And if you do not have anything to bring forth to God, open your mouth and give thanks to God. And if you have something, you can couple it with a gift to God. It could be monetary items. It could be what the church needs. Because in as much as we are, you know, dispensing with the uh, messages of giving um Times give, uh, of giving tithes to God, in as much as we are dispensing that message, we also want you to recognize that the church do need your offering. They need your money. The church need your money for the propagation of gospel. Listen, um, the uh, 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 new life, being born again, eternity is free. When God delivers you. When God shed his blood and gave us the new life and uh, for our eternity, for, 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 for us to, 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 to be in Christ, it is free. But for the church to continue to move on and reach the uttermost part of the, of the earth, we need your offering. The church needs your offering. The church needs your gifts. So during Thanksgiving, it's a time to bring something before God, monetarily, to give God. It could be a gift. What the church needs. It could be piano, it could be fear, it could be the flute, it could be drums, it could be microphone, it could be the light to pay the light, the gas, the seats. So this is our avenues where you can bring your thanksgiving to God. Now, thanksgiving has a language. Before we go into that again, let me remind you what we spoke about last week. We gave examples of how Jesus Christ gave thanks before he did any miracle. We gave thanks before he, 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 he multiplied the five loaves of bread and the uh, 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 12 fishes and fed uh, thousands. And fed thousands, 5,000 and many women, 5,000 men and many women and um, children, which were not counted amongst the 5,000 men. He did it again about uh, in the next chapter in the Bible. It did it again within a span of a short time, and it fed me uh, thousands of people as well. But it gave thanks. Jesus Christ gave thanks even before he, every miracle Jesus did. If you read it, he first of all gave thanks. He said, "Thank you, God, because you always hear me." And then you will do the miracle. That is a groundwork. It's a, a preparation for a miracle to be embedded. When you give thanks, it is. A, 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 a confirmation of a, 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 a price pregnancy that's about to give birth, of a miracle that's about to unfold, to manifest. Thanksgiving lays the foundation. Thanksgiving moves God because God understands Thanksgiving. Even before Jesus Christ went to the cross of Calvary to finalize the work he came to do, the work of redemption. He gave thanks. Remember, he gave thanks at the inner room when he broke the bread 
and shared it amongst his disciples and he gave them his blood his, as his flesh and he also shared the cup of wine as his blood he gave thanks this is because he's about to do the last work that god sent him to do which is the work of salvation which is the work of saving you and i he gave thanks and immediately after he, he, the bible recorded that he was arrested and he was led to the cross he gave thanks and because he gave thanks he laid the foundation for the miracle the work of redemption the work of salvation that he did for humanity to to manifest he was able to do it and he did it excellently and god was happy with him hallelujah so that's giving lays a foundation it has a language today we are talking about the language of thanksgiving when you are give when you give thanks to god you are speaking to god god understands it's a spiritual language he says because you are giving thanks to god it must come from a pure heart because it's a language when you are giving thanks to god where is that thanksgiving coming from God is interested. It's not that. Listen, when we when we say we are bringing uh, we are bringing uh, money to church for Thanksgiving, we are bringing gift to church for Thanksgiving. It's not that God needs all of that for Himself. Whatever we bring is for humanity. When we bring things to church, when we provide money to church for them to be able to pay the light, the gas through our Thanksgiving offering. When we bring gift to church by replenishing whatever it is tools they need in church. It's for our own. It's not that he needed it in heaven. He has everything. But it's for our own comfort. So what we bring to God, even though we are bringing it to God, is for our comfort. So when you bring it, not this. That it's not that God depends on it. It's not that God... This, he said, if we do not obey him, he will raise stones to work for him. God will not replace us, you and I, with a stone in the name of Jesus. So he's able and more than able to do all things and accomplish whatever he needed to do. So it is on us. It is on us. So we must speak the right language. When you are bringing thanksgiving, God wants to know where is it coming from? What heart is bringing this thanksgiving? This thanksgiving that is, bring, is being brought to me is coming from where? Because he understands. The language of thanksgiving, he understands. It's a spiritual language. God understands it. And where it's coming from, more or less, is how the language is spoken to him. If your thanksgiving is coming from a bitter heart, it's unacceptable before God. If your thanksgiving is coming from a heart that complains all the time, a heart that is always talking about what God has is yet to do and not acknowledging what God has already done in your life, that, that, that thanksgiving is not an acceptable sacrifice before the Lord. Where is that thanksgiving coming from? That is the language of the thanksgiving. That is the language that God understands. That is what God wants to ascertain first. That if this thanksgiving you're bringing to me, is it coming from a pure heart? Is it coming from a heart that complains? Is it coming from a heart that is in contention? A heart that is unforgiving? A heart even the bible recorded it in matthew 24 um 11 i think he said that when you pray make sure that you have resolved every issue with you and whoever you had an issue with before you come before him to pray before you bring any thanksgiving unto him he said leave it at the altar and first of all go and reconcile because it has a language thanksgiving where it's coming from the heart that is giving that thanksgiving is what makes that thanksgiving to be acceptable if you're giving thanksgiving from a grieved heart, a heart is always in grief, or someone that's always in strife, you just finish abusing somebody, you just finish beating up your wife, you just mean finish uh, disgracing your wife, finish dishonoring your wife, you just finish misbehaving to your parents, you just finish um, um, creating chaos in wherever you are you just finish cheating stealing uh, you know gossiping maligning envying you just you, your heart is full of strife and bitterness and anger and negativity if you're bringing thanks to god with such a heart inside 
it is not acceptable because that thanksgiving no matter how big it is no even if it is five million ten million one billion that you're bringing to god is unacceptable to god because that thanksgiving is speaking strife what is in your heart is what that thanksgiving is saying to god so no matter how much it is god is not accepting it god is not happy with it god is not uh, it's, it's not recognizing it the book of psalm 44 21 says will not god search this out for he knows the secrets of the heart god sees your heart so your thanksgiving must become from a pure heart if you to know that your heart is still in bitterness, is still in strife, is still in anger, is still in, uh, in contention with someone, laying ambush against someone, demeaning someone, pulling down someone. If you know your thanksgiving is coming from envy, don't bother to bring it. It's unacceptable to God. God does not accept such thanksgiving because it, whatever is in your heart is the language that thanksgiving is saying to god that thanksgiving is not is not thanking god for whatever may be coming out of your mouth that god has done for you but it's saying to god what is in your heart that nobody else is saying but god like the book of psalm 44 says 21 will not god search this out for he knows the secrets of the heart so your thanksgiving must come from a pure heart that is when you are, the thanksgiving you brought is saying something concrete something tangible something beautiful to god that is when god can acknowledge it first chronicles chapter 29 verse 17 says i know my god that you search the heart and take pleasure in uprightness that means it at the uh, heart is not upright god does not take pleasure in it and imagine such a heart bringing thanksgiving offering to god bringing 10 million 1 billion to god when that heart is not upright it has no play god is not uh, does not have pleasure in it so that means that that heart that you are using to thank god is not an acceptable platform to bring that offering and god is not accepting it it's not that the church would say, take God to say no. When you bring it, the church may accept. The pastor of the church may accept. But God is not accepting. Remember, you are bringing it to God. Even though you are presenting it to the church for the betterment of the, the body of Christ, which is you and I, because God don't eat money or spend money in heaven or where, or, or where he is. Omnipotent, omnipresent, everywhere. But then, your heart is what is communicating God to God. Your heart is what is telling God something. Your heart is what is representing that. That is what your heart is. What is the platform from which that thanksgiving is being presented to God? Your heart. If you give God one dollar and your heart is pure and clean and beautiful it's much more acceptable than someone that is coming with a bitter heart with an, a, a, a gripped heart with a heart that complains heart that is uh, 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 envious heart that wants to pull down heart that is always in negativity that is always causing chaos heart that's causing a rebellious heart a hypocritical heart a heart that is that's been left for for uh, uh, terrible things no matter how much you bring with such a heart, that heart is saying something negative to God is unacceptable. That is the language of your thanksgiving. The heart. God search the heart. It must be from a pure heart. So let me continue reading the book of Chronicles 20, 29, 17. It says, I know, my God, that you search the heart and take pleasure in uprightness. In the uprightness of my heart, I have freely offered all these things you search the heart you take pleasure in uprightness so in the uprightness of my heart i have freely offered all these things my thanksgiving so when your heart is upright it's not when you say it alone god is seeing the heart and knows whether truly it is up an upright heart that is when it is acceptable before god I continue reading my heart 
uh, all, that's why I brought all these things. And now I have seen your people who are present here offering freely and joyously to be, to you. So this in the book of Chronicles here is being said that this is being well, you know, exposed here that we are bringing this Thanksgiving with a pure heart because you search the heart and you have pleasure in a good heart in a heart in an up, upright heart in a pure heart and i'm bringing this thanksgiving from a pure heart freely unto you and then all the people here are bringing it their thanksgiving to you joyously are you bringing your thanksgiving to god joyously or are you bringing it with mutterings and anger and murmuring and you know with a reprobate heart are you bringing your thanksgiving to god with an improper heart the foundation of that thanksgiving that you're bringing is important remember that thanksgiving lays a foundation for a mighty miracle to unfold every miracle christ god did that jesus did in the bible go as such the bible said and he gave thanks and then you will say, thank you, God, because you always hear me. And then you will say, you will pronounce that miracle. And that miracle will unfold. So Thanksgiving is a powerful platform to achieve your needs, your wants, your desires, what you have been praying for. It unleashes the presence of God unto you. It opens up the windows of heaven unto you. And showers of blessings are rain on you when you give your thanksgiving on a, from a proper heart, a pure heart. That is the language that God understands. Your heart is what is speaking to God when you bring that thanksgiving. That it is your heart that is speaking to God concerning that thanksgiving that you have brought, no matter how much, what is your heart saying? Did you finish abusing someone? Are you having an affair with a married man, destroying a home, and you are bringing thanksgiving before God? Did you, do you have someone in mind, keeping malice? Are you in strife with someone? Are you destroying someone, destroying a home, destroying a family? Are you an irresponsible father, irresponsible mother, neglecting your children? not teaching them in the way of the Lord, so that when they grow up, they will not depart from it? Are you fulfilling your chores, your responsibility as a parent? Are you bringing thanksgiving before the Lord? God is seeing your heart. Psalm 11 verse 5 says, the eternal, the eternal, which is God, searches the heart of those who are good. God searches the heart of those who are good. God knows if you are good. God knows if you are bad. There are so many people on this internet. So the social world that we're in now, do not let us know who is who. We have so many people we are connecting with that are talking to us, telling us how nice we are, telling us they love us, and then, you know, we don't know who they are. We don't see their heart. So we have not even met face to face. But God sees the heart. If they're lying, if they're cheating, if they're masking themselves up, if they're hypocrites, God sees it all. Who cannot? Know the hearts of man. Genesis chapter 6, verses 5 and 6. It says, Who can know the heart of man except God? Because anything you bring to God is from that heart. Anything you are presenting to God is from that heart. It's from that heart. Amen. Whatever you present to God is from the heart. It's a platform. It's like when you giving, when you want to dish something, uh, you give somebody something, and you put it on a very nice, beautiful tray, and you are, you know, giving it to that person. So the your thanksgiving, the platform on which your thanksgiving is laid on, is your heart. It is the tray that carries that thanksgiving to God. So God is looking at the heart, and God is understanding the language in the heart. He knows if there's strife. In it, he knows if there's discontentment, he knows if you are in anger, he knows if you are if you are abusing, if you are destructive, he knows if you are pulling down, he knows if you are if you are maligning even your pastors, he knows if you are the, the, the same pastor, the church that you're going, he knows if you are destroying the church, the church of God. 
He knows what you're saying out of your mouth outside where nobody's there. He sees your heart. God understands the language of thanksgiving. And like I was saying, Psalm 11, 5 says, The eternal searches the heart of those who are good, but he despises all those who can get enough of perversion and violence. So God searches the heart, he knows those who are good. And he despises those who can get enough of perversion and violence. God sees it. Man may not see it. I may not see your heart. But God sees it. He knows whether what you crave is pandemonium, chaos, violence, perversion. You are going against the word of God. You are living in sin, walking in sin, consciously, intentionally doing evil calling yourself what god did not call you transforming yourself into what god did not transform you into and you're coming to him with thanksgiving whatever might have happened you bought a new car you bought a new house it's immaterial how you got it at this point is even immaterial because if you are not an upright person yourself everything that you may be acquiring right now is ephemeral it's just like winds of the air that can blow away it's what comes from god that lasts so when you are not who you are supposed to be when you are transformed yourself into what you are not supposed to be and you are acquiring all these things and you're living in sin and you're coming to god that god you did this i'm giving you thanks it's unacceptable because it sees your heart that is filled with sin like i it says, Psalm 11 verse 5 says, The eternal searches the heart of those who are good, but he despises all those who can get enough of perversion and violence. He despises it. The Bible says that the eyes of God cannot behold sin. He cannot behold sin. It's just not in him. Let's look at an example in the Bible of a thanksgiving that God rejected. We're talking about what the, what it is, the language of thanksgiving that God understands, that speaks to God, which is your heart. Let us look at, a, at an example. For instance, we have the story of Cain and Abel. The Bible says, let me quickly take you to the book of Genesis, chapter 4, verses 3 to 7. It says, we're going to talk about, about Cain and Abel because they brought the thanksgiving to God. The Bible says, <clears throat> I'm going to be reading from verse 3 to 7. I'm going to read very quickly. And verse 3 says, And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Cain was a farmer. So he brought good, he brought fruit of the ground an offering to the Lord for his thanksgiving. On the other hand, verse 4 says, And Abel, his brother, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof, and the Lord respect unto Abel and to his offering. You see, when God talk, when they when when they refer to the offering of Abel, they God emphasized it. God described his thanksgiving offering. Let us go through it again. Verse four says, and Abel. He also brought of the first lanes of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. So he brought the first lanes, that is the first fruits, the first he gave to God. He didn't take from it first for himself, the first of it. He gave it to God. And God continued and said that and of the fat thereof. That means he took the best of his offering, of, of his flock. Abel was a farmer. He was a shepherd. And he, when he brought his own offering, he brought the first links, the first of those sheep to 
sacrifice to God. And he didn't also bring the first alone. He made sure that they were the fattest. They were the beautifulest. They were the youngest. They were the, the, the most succulent. The biggest. The ones that looked nicest. He didn't keep that for himself. And he offered it unto God. And the Bible recorded that God had respect for it. Why would God have respect for the uh, sacrifice of Abel and not of Cain? Let us go back to what Cain brought. Again, I'm reading verse 3 of Genesis 4. I'm reading verse 3 again. I'm reading it again. I went back. And the Bible says, In the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Is there any description? Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. There's no description. There's no the, the, the first of the harvest, the fattest, beautiful, sumptuous, huge, piled. There was no description. Then you could see that Cain just brought, he just brought what he could bring. Cain just brought what he felt was okay. He wasn't considering that let me give the fattest to the Lord. Let me give the choicest to the Lord. Let me make it beautiful. Let me give let me give what is the best of what I have to the Lord. Cain did not do that. Abel did that. Because God described Abel's offering as fat. First, the first of the of, of the first of, 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 of it. And the fastest. The firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. Cain brought the choicest. The best of the best of what he had. You can see that Cain was, um, I mean Abel. Abel brought the best of the best. And you can see that Abel brought it with a joyful heart. Because for you to give the best of your best and give and, you know, patiently select the best of the sheep, the biggest, the fattest, the choicest, that means you are considering who you are giving this to and you want to give the best. And you want to give it joyfully. Unlike Cain that just said that God said he brought an offering before the Lord. There's a difference. So why did God reject Cain? Because the way he brought it, and then it's not only the way he brought it. That the, for God to describe it this way, that means Cain could have done better. So it wasn't that Cain was poor. It wasn't that Cain was in poverty. Remember I said that even if you don't have anything, it is your heart that God sees. God knows if you have and if you don't have. He knows where that is coming from. Where that offering is coming from, he sees the heart. So it shows that Cain could have done better. He had the means to do better. But he did not. He didn't bother. He didn't give that much that regard to God. And secondly, what is the heart of Cain? Remember, I said thanksgiving is the language that communicates with God. Your heart is the platform, the tree that, 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 that your thanksgiving is placed on. And when I say, I'm saying it uh, me metaphorically. Metaphorically. That means, I'm not saying, assuming you want to give the church a car as a thanksgiving. So I'm not saying you go and put the car, put it on a tree. No, uh -huh. so I want you to know, just use it as a sample to explain what I'm trying to say, that your heart is the plate, the, the tray by which you bring your thanksgiving. So whatever you're bringing, it is what your heart is saying, that is the language that you're saying to God. What is Cain's heart saying here? You can see the kind of heart Cain has. Let us continue reading. And I'll read verse 5. I'm reading Genesis 4. He says, But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth. Cain got angry. And his countenance fell. Who is he angry with? He's angry with God. Again, is, Cain is angry with God. Can you imagine that? And verse 6 said, And the Lord said unto Cain, Why are you wroth? Why are you angry with me? Why are you, why are you angry? And why is thy countenance falling? Verse 7, it says, If thou doest well, that means he wasn't doing well. God's not telling him, if you did well, if you were doing well, if thou doest well, 
seeing lions at the door and unto thee shall be his desire so sin is in your heart i see sin and you do the desires of sin you obey sin whatever is simple is what sinful is what you are putting your hands into and you are purposely intentionally doing it it's not a mistake that we can say that a believer has fallen and then rise again you are perpetually a sinner you walk in sin you dwell in sin you live in sin you rejoice in sin you have pleasures in sin that is what god is saying about Cain. and unto thee shall be his desire so unto thee shall be the desires of sin thou shall rule over him so that was it God is saying to Cain that that is the reason why I didn't accept it. You live in sin. You dwell in sin. Your heart is so dirty. I can't even look at you. So when God cannot even look at you, your heart is saying something dirty, something bitter to God. God will move away. So you are bringing that offering, but nothing is happening in your life. And that is why sometimes we bring offering to God and um, we are not, we are, we're seeing that nothing is happening. That that miracle is not happening. Because, like I said, you could bring thanksgiving to God in expectation of a miracle. And you could also bring thanksgiving to God for what he has already done. So when you are bringing that thanksgiving for what he has done, what is in your heart? Sin is not, is not accepting it. It's not. You are just pressing the thanksgiving offering to, to the church or to him, but then it's not accepting it. I remember, even though you are thanking God for what he has done before, but for the mere fact that you are thanking God, you already laid another foundation for a miracle. But when he thanksgiving, thanksgiving is not coming from a pure heart. Thanksgiving is coming from a questionable heart, a heart full of sin. You are not laying any foundation for miracles to unfold. So you may not see things begin to happen the way you want to see it. And if you're bringing that thanksgiving as a challenge to God to do something in your life, but you are living in sin, you may not see it happen, even though you have brought something as a pledge, as a challenge. But it's not happening because it's coming from a sinful heart. So that thanksgiving, that challenge that you have brought to God, that pledge, is speaking sin. Sinful nature. has sin written all over it. And God is not going to respond to that. So your thanksgiving comes, must come from a pure heart. The Bible says in the book of Philippians 4, 6, it said, be careful for nothing. Philippians 4, 6, be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. That means don't care for anything. Don't let anything bother you. Don't think about what your tomorrow will be. Don't even think about what today will unfold. Believe. Okay? But as you believe, God is saying to you, be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving. So as you are not, as God is saying, be careful for nothing, just pray. Tell me all about it. When you pray, with supplication unto God, but with thanksgiving. So why is God adding thanksgiving to that your prayer? Remember that you ask from God what you want with thanksgiving. Uh, sorry, with prayer. So why is God adding thanksgiving to that prayer? That means do not. Your prayer is not complete if you have not put thanksgiving in it. Remember I told you how Jesus Christ always thanking God before he embarks on a miracle. Because he has laid the foundation. He has thanked God for what he's about to do. He has thanked God for that he's about to do. He believe. He has, he has prayed. He has put his supplication before the Lord that he's, he wants to heal this man. He wants to call Lazarus out from dead. Even though Lazarus has been dead for four days. He's about to wake him up. But before I can do that, I want to thank you first because I know you will hear me and I know you will answer me regarding that request, that healing, that uh, Lazarus that I'm about to wake up, that death 
that I'm, I want to command to obey me because the Bible says, even in the grave, Jesus is Lord, and the death, even death obeys him. But before he can command the death, he's giving thanks to the Father that is able to do it, that is going to do it. What are you doing? How are you ex in expectations of, in, of, from God? of what you need of what you desire of what you have been praying for how have you been bringing your thanksgiving or your pledges with a cart full of sin contrite heart heart full of vile full of contention grieved heart full of strife malice reprobate heart sinful heart fornicating adultery Calling yourself some sexual sexual perversions that God did not call you. Is that the heart that you have been using to bring your thanksgiving before God? Because when you give thanks to God with a pure heart, the windows of heaven will open unto you. The showers of blessings will rain on you. That your desire will be met. I don't care how long. I don't care when or how. But I know that God will do it because he has done it before and he can do it again. He changed not. He's the unchangeable changer. Jehovah Yahweh. Where is that thanksgiving? That thanksgiving coming from? Where is it? Where is, is it? You have to give thanks with a grateful heart. Let me tell you, there's so many numerous blessings in thanksgiving. When you give God thanks, it unleashes the, the possibilities in your life. I said it before last week, and it fulfills all your outstanding miracles, even what you have been in the expectations for. In the past, it comes to pass when you give God thanks. It fulfills God's word quickly in your life. Hallelujah. It fulfills God's word quickly. We will remember that. That his word is yea and amen. And once he speaks it, it does not come back to him void. And this Bible is the word of God. And every word that is in that is in it is alive and amen. It will come to pass in your life if you believe. But are you giving thanks? So you don't only believe in the word of God. You give thanks for that word. You're going to say, God, I thank you because you said that I will live, I will not die. So I thank you because I will not die. In the, when, the, when there was COVID, you give thanks for your life. Thank you, Jesus, because I know that I will not die because of your word. So you, you, you pray to God and you use his word to pray and you also thank him for that word. And that will unleash the miracle in your life. The miracle you need to stay alive. You thank him for his word of provision. He said, good men shall add unto you. Good measure, praise thou, shake it over. Shall men add unto you. But you have to give thanks. As you ask for all these things that you want men to add unto you, you give thanks for his word that said it. And that is when, boom, it will come to pass. That's when it will unleash. That is when it will manifest because you are thanking him. For that already. For that that you have asked him already. And you're also thanking him for what he has done already. It's a two-way street. You are thanking him for what he has done already. And you're also thanking him for what he's going to do. When you come with a pure heart. A pure heart. A pure heart. Thanksgiving will give you double for it. Of, of, of double portion of his blessing. Thanksgiving will give you financial outpouring, restoration, special miracles. Thanksgiving we unleash the miracles, outstanding miracles, miracles that will outstand your friends, even your enemies, that will draw men closer to God, that they will say, "Wow, take us to your God." God will unleash it in your life when you give Him thanks, when you thank Him for that. You have to thank God with a pure heart don't just pray you give thanks don't just give thanks you give thanks with a pure heart then the miracle will unfold it brings restoration thank him for restoring you and your family and it will happen thank him for your child 
that is going astray, thanking that the boy will, the, that child will be okay, will, will come back, his heart will come back home. He will, he will, will be set free from every unfriendly friend, anyone that is dissuading him away from God. Thank God. As you pray that God should break every unfriendly friend away from that child, thank God that that child is delivered from such a relationship. Thank Him. And it will unfold. He's a God that fulfills His promises in our lives. Once He says it, He will do it. A heart that cannot thank God is a heart that has no expectations from God. And a heart that is thanking God not for not from a pure heart but from a sinful heart is a heart that is you know destroying their expectations, has no expectations, and destroying anything that God may have in stock for them when you give thanks from a sinful heart. And a heart that is not in expectations of God is a heart that will not receive the manifestation of the works of God in your life. So you have to be in expectation. But before you can have what you have in that expectation, you have to thank him from a pure heart. First, as you pray to God and, uh, and, give, him, and give your supplication unto him. Hallelujah. Be a thanksgiving, someone that gives thanks from a pure heart, it shortens the journey of 10, 20 years to one year. Anyone that might have overtaken you, when you have a heart of thanksgiving, thanking God from a pure heart, you to make a journey, what your friends took 10 years, 20 years to achieve, God can make you achieve it within one year. Those that has you know, overtaken you and gone way ahead of you, God can make you to speed up to them. We did a, a, a twinkle of an eye. Remember, one day is like 10,000 before the Lord. And 10,000 is like a day before the Lord. God can walk with time, change time, do time, stop time, unleash time, quicken time for your sake. When you give, give him thanks from a pure heart. Your heavens is continually open. When you go to the book of Psalm 111, read from chapter 1 to the end, it will tell you what, why you should give God thanks. That is good to give to God thanks. Psalm 111 from verse 1, it says, it says, Hallelujah, I give thanks to God with everything I've got. Wherever good people gather and in congregation, God's work are so great. Work of a lifetime of study, endless enjoyment. This, this is talking about the works of God and why we're giving thanks. What is doing to you every day, doing for you, doing on your behalf. It says, splendor and beauty mark his craft. God beautifies our lives. He's such an artistic God. You will see create some people so artistically a black child with blue eyes even in creation is artistic splendor and beauty mark his craft why are we not giving him thanks from a pure heart his generosity never gives out it never stops giving he gives us new benefits every day this god of grace this god of love he gave food to those who fear him his miracles are his memorial. He remembers to keep his ancient promise. He, he, he fulfills all his promises in your life daily to his people that he could do what he said. He does whatever he says he will do. He's a God, not a man. He's a God, not man. God, when God says it, he will do it. It's not a man that you should repent. It's man that can repent to a man. God, who is God going to repent to? Neither is it the son of man to, 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 to say he's sorry. Once he says it, he will do it. That is the God that we serve. So why are we not giving thanks to God from a pure heart? He said, all he manufactures truth and justice. is a God of justice. That is why even if you are being tormented or if someone has done evil for him, leave it to God to fight on your behalf because he's a God of vengeance. I tell you, the God, the, the vengeance of God or your enemies is much more 
more terrible than whatever you may think you have power to do to that enemy where you leave it to god he said i am god of vengeance anyone that touches you will see the wrath of god because you are the anointed of the lord the bible says touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm give thanks to him for fighting your battle for avenging for you against your enemies give him thanks all these products are guaranteed to last never out of date never obsolete rust proof all that he makes and does is honest and true he paid the ransom for his people he's paid the ransom for your salvation he ordered his covenant kept forever he's so personal and holy worthy of our respect the good life begins in the fear of god do that and you'll know the blessings of god is hallelujah lasts forever and so much more the reason is to thank god it's wonderful to thank god it's beautiful to thank god because as you thank him you never go it's empty-handed you never go empty-handed when you come before the presence of god with thanksgiving you cannot leave his presence empty-handed it is impossible is a God that will meet you at the point of your knees where you give him thanks. When you give him thanks, you lay the foundation, the platform for great miracles. When you give him thanks with a pure heart, you the, the windows of heaven are immediately opened on your behalf to, and jars of blessings shall rain upon you when you give him thanks from a pure heart. Do not go to God without going to God with a pure heart. I encourage you to get away from your sinful life. If you know you're living in sin, don't block. Do not block your blessing. Do not block your breakthrough. You go to God with a pure heart so that your miracles can manifest. So that you don't ask God, why are you, am I being delayed? Why is everything not going right for me? Why is this happening to this person and that happening to that person? What is going on with me? I'm telling you now, because you of your heart, the platform for which you're giving thanks from, even the platform for which you're speaking and praying to God from, it has to be a pure heart. And if you're living in sin, you have the opportunity now to go to God and ask Him for mercy to forgive you and wash you clean with the blood of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, oh God, Father, for this time, this hour, this beautiful day. Thank you for this first day of Friday, the first um, Sunday of the month of December, the last month of the year, 2022. Thank you for this hour and the word you have spoken to us. Thank you, oh God, because now we know that Thanksgiving as a language that God understands is the language of God. Thank you, oh Lord, because we now know that it is what the heart that speaks to God. That is the platform, the plate from which we bring you thanks. Oh Lord, we pray for anyone that may be walking in sin, that might not be standing right before thee, oh God. We pray for your mercy, your forgiveness, for your compassion on such a one as they bow down their heads in repentance now for you to have mercy and forgive in Jesus' name. Every heart that has strayed away from you, Lord, Father, have mercy and forgive in the name of Jesus. Father, have mercy, oh God, Oh, Lord, have mercy because of your son that paid the price of their salvation. Because of that blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary for the salvation of mankind. Father, have mercy on your people. Oh, Lord, have mercy and forgive in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, you say, if we are faithful, if, we are, if you are honest enough to confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Lord, I thank you for your word. Because as you said it, I know you will do it. You are not a man that you should lie. That are you the son of man that you should repent. Once you say it, you will do it. And right now, as I bow down my head, and every other person that may be bowing down their head at this moment, in repentance of their sinful nature, I thank you, Lord, because you have heard us and you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus. Father, I receive my thanks in Jesus' name. I'm thanking you on their behalf, oh God. Father, Lord, I thank you. Jehovah God, I thank you. Now I pray that you claim 
cleanse all everyone with the blood of Jesus. Oh Lord, cleanse us, oh Lord. Cleanse everyone that is bound their head today in repentance, oh God. Cleanse them all with the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Have mercy, Lord. Let the blood of Jesus begin to speak for each and every one of us. In the name of Jesus. And anyone that has not found you yet, that are yet, still yet to locate who this God is, that is yet to have to receive salvation. Oh Lord, I commit those ones into your heart right now. And if you're one of them, please repeat after me. Say, Father, today I come before thee, O oh God. I repent of all my sins and my iniquities. Father, Lord, I pray that you have mercy upon me in the name of Jesus. I repent of them all, O oh God. I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord and my Savior. Oh Lord, have mercy. I, I, I set me, O oh Lord, into the fold in the name of Jesus. I I repent of them all. I denounce all my sins. And I, 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 from today on, I shall follow you in Jesus' name. And so shall it be. I welcome you all to the kingdom of God. I the, the heavens are rejoicing now as you have spoken these words, as you have come to him in grace. Oh, Reba Sin Kalabara, Reba Sia. Welcome to the household of God. Welcome to the beauty and the presence of God. It's beautiful to be in the in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the Lord, because it is filled with filled with the fullness of joy. I pray that the blood of Jesus that is shed for your sake, for my sake, will begin to speak for you, speak healing, speak deliverance, speak upliftment, manifestations of greatness upon your life, uh, promotions, increase, enlargement in Jesus' name. Begin to, re re begin to express supernatural turnaround and increase and blessings upon your life from this moment on in Jesus' name as you are found him. And I pray in the name of Jesus that everybody henceforth will come to God with a pure heart as they present their thanksgiving before you, O God. It is important to give thanks. Thank Him for seeing you from January to this moment. Give Him thanks. I pray that you will not be an ungrateful person before the Lord. You will be grateful for what He has done. Think back, sit back, and count your blessings, and you will you it it will ex ex extend you. How many wonderful, wonderful things that God has done in your life. You will be astounded yourself. Even for waking you up this morning is a miracle. Many died this morning. Men died 1st of January of this year. Many will not even see it up until January coming. Thank God for your life. Thank God for keeping you, for making you to see the first Sunday of the month of December. And he that is able to make you see the first Sunday will make you see the last Sunday, even down to the end, last day of December, and you will see the year 2023 enjoying goodness, in, 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 in peace, in harmony, in, with greatness and blessings in abundance in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will not be, uh, you, uh, you will not be the one standing against your miracle in the name of Jesus. Anyone that may be walking contrarily to the will of God, to the word of God in their life. Lord, I pray that you touch their heart in Jesus' name. I pray you will not be a problem to your life. You will not be the one that is causing hindrance to your breakthrough in the name of Jesus. You will not be your own enemy for your breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Beloved, search your heart so that you will not be an enemy of your own breakthrough. You will not be the one standing against yourself. And then you'll be talking about, see, there's somebody in the family that is doing you, that is doing evil to you. No, you might just be the one destroying yourself, blocking your blessings from God. When you walk in sin, when you don't walk with a pure heart. When you come to God and you're not coming with a pure heart. Hallelujah. So I pray that all your thanksgiving from today on will be acceptable unto God. In Jesus' name, as you begin to bring to God with a pure heart. And so shall it be for you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I now declare that this week that you're stepping into shall be a week of grace, of peace, of joy, of increase, and manifestations of the goodness and greatness of God upon your lives. In the name of Jesus, every expectations of, that you have from God, 
for this week that we're stepping into from today, it shall be met, it shall manifest in the name of Jesus. God will answer your prayers even more than your request in Jesus' name. God will show up and show forth for you. He will increase you, he will enlarge you. He will bless you abundantly in the name of Jesus. I put around the shield of protection of God around you and your household in the name of Jesus. Jesus, no evil shall befall you, no plague shall come near your dwelling in Jesus' name. Because you have run into the name of Christ, that is a strong tower and you continue to continually be saved with your families in Jesus' name. This new week you are stepping into, when you step out, you will go in peace. When you come back, you will come back in peace. In Jesus' name. You will not have accident. You will not hit anybody. Nobody will hit you. In the name of Jesus. When you go, the host of heaven will go before you. They will prepare every crooked way for you and make it straight in Jesus' name. Oh, Riva Sin I declare, I declare that this week you are stepping into every arrow targeted that you shall not prosper. In the name of Jesus. I pray that the Lord will bless you, will keep you, and that helpers of destiny that you have been looking and crying unto God for, you will locate that helper this week in the name of Jesus. You shall come back next week with testimonies and dancing, and so shall it be in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you all for joining. Thank you for your presence here please share 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 please share the message and let it go far let it go viral thank you all may you go and be blessed i love you jesus christ love you more go and do exploits for the lord we'll meet again next week by the grace and the power of god in jesus name amen thank you all and bye love you love you all love you all amen